Hey everyone, and welcome to the third episode in my two-player tank game series where I show how to make a two-player tank game. Wow, I bet you didn't guess that. Today, I'm going to be adding in the player turns and the camera functionality. That way, the camera will snap onto the right tank according to what turn it is. So if it's player one, it'll go to the player one tank. If you're excited for today's episode, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing. But anyway, let's get into this tutorial. So I have a new sprite called camera, and it is blank. I mean, the costumes are blank. I'm going to name this costume blank in fact the costumes blank there's no sounds there's no code and then we have a sprite called turn this will just display what player's turn it is so this one shows player one this one shows player two the same background and then outline but as you can see it's just a square that will cover up the little seams on the edge of the screen now as always if you want to use my exact sprites and costumes and stuff you can check the link in the description and i will have a project with all of my stuff in it okay so let's get into coding the outline since that's easy so in Inside of the outline, add a wind green flag clicked and a show block, a go to zero zero, which is the center of the screen, a forever loop, and then a go forward one layer. Okay, so now if we go ahead and check this out, you can see that there's an outline now and it'll hide a lot of the seams that we sometimes get. Now in the backdrops, let's make a floral sprite variable, make this one called turn. So this is just going to be whose turn it is. So in the very beginning, when we reset it, the turn is going to be empty. Now another word for that that we use in program programming is null. So we're going to set the turn to null. We'll go ahead and show turn and put that in the bottom right and start the game. It sets it to null. Okay, now what we need to do is tell the game that, hey, we're going to start the round. So to do that, add a broadcast right underneath the start game and name this one begin round. And that will tell the game that, hey, we're starting the game. Now we want to go ahead and go into the camera and make it to where when we start the game, it will kind of go to the middle of the screen and then zoom out. So we want to go into camera for the sprite only variable called begin round. This is like a kind of boolean that will be true or false. And now we want to go ahead and set the begin round when I receive begin round to true. After two seconds, we're going to set that to false because then we want to actually start the game. Okay, so now you can see if we show the begin round, start the game, it'll set it to true. After two seconds, it'll set it to false. Okay, so now we have the camera knowing when it should zoom out in the very beginning. Okay, with that being said, we need to add a when I receive in here and then new message, name this tick space dash camera. Now we can go ahead and just add an if else checking if the begin round is equal to true. So if we are just starting out the round to move the camera to the middle of the map. So the scroll x and scroll y are basically the position of the camera. Go ahead and go into say the player and pull this whole thing right here into the camera. And then you can go ahead and take out the tank x and delete the tank x for the sprite only variable inside the camera, not for the player. So now we kind of have this blank template that we can use. So instead of just blank, Let's go ahead and take the world width times 480. So this will get the width of the world. Then we want to divide that by 2. So it's in the middle. That's going to be on the very end of a chunk in the map. We want to subtract half of our screen width, which a screen width is 480 and half of 480 is 240. So if we go ahead and take all that minus 240, that will get us in the very center of the world in the center of that chunk. Now we can put that in the times right there. And then we'll just put the change like so. And this is isn't going to do anything because we never actually broadcast this tick loop. In the backdrops, at the very top, add a broadcast tick camera because we want that to happen before we move anything. And I actually forgot one piece. We want to take all of that divided by one. So now if we go ahead and start the game, you can see that look at this. When we zoom out, we are in the very center of the world. Now we want to simply duplicate this and then change the scroll Y by delete all of this until you just have the blank and replace the blank with a zero. So that way it goes to zero and then we can put that in there. Oh wait, I forgot to change this minus scroll x. We want to do minus scroll y. Now you can see that it'll snap to the middle. And as soon as the begin round is false, it won't do that anymore. Now let's make it zoom out in the beginning. So we want to change the camera zoom by a minus here. We want to set the desired zoom, which is 20. Then we want to subtract that from the camera zoom and then divide that by our damping. So I'll do five because that looks like a nice number. But you can now see that in the very beginning, it will start zoomed in and then zoom out nicely to the center of the screen. Now in the else here, let's go ahead and put 
60. You can now see if we go ahead and start this after two seconds, it will zoom in. Okay, that's fantastic. Now let's make it actually move to the player. Duplicate that and take out the change right here. Now go ahead and remove this so that way they kind of look the same. Now we want to figure out the position of the tank. If you remember, it's a variable tank X and Y, but we can't actually do that right now because they're for the sprite only. So a trick to get around that is just to use this block right here. If we do backdrop of stage, changes to player one, we can actually find the for the sprite only variable right here so tank x of player one for the x part and then tank y of player one for the y part of course and now go ahead and put that in there like so you can now see that it will snap on to the player if you like you can add some damping here so i'll do 15. you can now see that it will kind of slowly zoom into the player so it's nice and smooth so what we want to do is make it to where we only go to the player one if the turn variable is equal to player one so to do this add an if else in here and check if the turn is equal to the player one and do all that otherwise we want to duplicate all of that and instead of player one select player two for both of these and then do tank x for the x and tank y for the y so once this finishes it'll go to player two because turn is null which means it's not equal to this so it goes to the else which is the player two to fix this we need to go ahead and broadcast a message right here after we set begin round to false so what the name of this is going to be is next turn now in the backdrops when i receive next turn here if the turn is equal to player one then we want to set the turn to player two so that way it swaps but if it's not player one maybe it's player two so if it's player two we want to set the turn to player one and last but not least if it's anything other than player one and player two then we want to just set it to player one so it'll start the loop again okay so once we do this you can see that after it's null it'll set it to player one and then go to player one let's go ahead and test to see if the turn is working so if we broadcast next turn you can see that here we go it goes to player two but if we do that again it'll loop back to player one you can go ahead and hide camera zoom for now now let's make the ui actually display what turn it is so go into turn and then click show and you can see it kind of pops up right here but it's not layered correctly so in the turn at a when i receive reset we want to go ahead and show go to front then go to negative 200 which is over here and then 165 which is perfect right here we want to add a when green flag click forever go to front now in the beginning also don't forget to switch costume to player one now when i receive the begin round we want to hide that way it's hidden and you can go ahead and take the show out of the reset now you can see in the very beginning it will hide but i want it to show when we actually start the game but when i receive next turn we want to repeat 10 times which costume to the turn now the reason this works is we named the costumes what the turn variable is set to which is player one and player two and now add another when i receive next turn and this will be the effect so it'll kind of do like a cool pixelate effect for now let's go ahead and just do show in this new one so you can see now it'll hide then it'll show and well that's not working so good it's still behind so what i found that works is if you replace when green flag clicked with a begin round so when i receive begin round forever then go to front and as you can see this will work so if we go ahead and broadcast next turn you can see that it'll say player two and player one player two and you can click that as many times as you want and it will keep track of whose turn it is now let's make it look cool so we want to clear the graphic effects set pixelate effect 25 set the brightness effect to 25 then repeat five times change pixelate effect by negative five then change brightness effect by negative five as well and then just to be safe let's clear the graphics effects at the very end so if you go ahead and test it out you can see that it kind of does a pixelate effect whenever the turn is switched now let's make it to where you can only turn Turn your barrel when the turn is correct because right now you can see that i can move the barrel no matter what even in the intro sequence so to do this right here in player one we have the turn barrel custom block now what we need to do is wrap that in an if then statement then we want to go ahead and check if the turn is equal to player one you can now see that we can no longer use a and d to move it but once it's our turn we can now we can still move player two with the arrow keys so we need to do the same thing in player two so what we want to do is go into player two and then wrap this turn barrel one in an if statement as well checking if the turn is equal to player two this time so you can now see that we can no longer move any of them unless it's the correct 
turn. Okay, so now let's make it to where we can actually press space and it'll switch the turns and then eventually we can come back and add the bullet being shot out of the barrel. In player one, when I receive next turn, we want to go ahead and set the turn speed to zero. That way we're not turning all around crazy. Then we want to wait 0.1 seconds so there's a slight delay. Then we want to check if the is clone is equal to false. That way only the actual sprite can do this. And we can go ahead and scroll over here. The turn is equal to player one. Then we can go ahead and wait until the key base press. Wait until not space key is pressed. Then we can go ahead and make the tank go down to the ground. That way it won't be in the air after we add knockback. Change the tank y by negative one in a repeat until touching ground. So that way it moved down. Then at the very end we want to repeat until not touching ground. Change y by one. That way it moves back up. And for now let's go ahead and right here add a broadcast next turn. Now if we go ahead and press space once it's player one you can see that it will switch to player two. Now we need to do the same thing in player two. So grab this hole when I receive turn and put that in player two. Let's make sure to check if the turns player two because it's player two now. Once it's player one we can press space and boom now it's player two. We can press space boom it's player one and that is working awesome. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing. But anyway this has been Owen and I am out. Thank <laughs> you.